Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work because I have an interesting little math word problem here for you. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. What speed measured in miles per hour does a car have to go to cover 150 miles in one hour and 20 minutes? All right, so that's the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm gonna walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so before I show you the actual answer, let's just kind of... um kind of get a sense of what we think the problem or the answer is going to be. So in other words, let's suppose you couldn't solve this, uh, you know, you didn't know the math, you know, and you're like, well, I don't really don't know. Uh, I can figure this out. Okay, fair enough. But let's just take a guesstimate, maybe some sort of educated guess. Uh, of course, that would be a guesstimate. Or, you know, what do you think? You know, what does common sense tell you? Well, this car has got to go 150 miles in one hour and 20 minutes. So do you think this car is gonna be going pretty quick? In other words, is it gonna be going like the speed limit or going slow? Well, this is a pretty good amount of distance to cover in not so much uh, you know, time. So indeed, I think the car is gonna be going fast. A matter of fact, the car is gonna be going this fast, 112.5 miles per hour. This car needs to slow down. It's definitely gonna get some speeding tickets, unless of course, it's someplace like in Germany on the Audubon. But uh, they would be using, I guess, kilometers per hour here, miles per hour. This is uh, what the standard system. So this would be like in the U.S. or places like that. So anyways, this person's got to slow down. Maybe they're excited. They want to get home and watch their favorite YouTube channel. But uh, anyways, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving motion problems that's basically what this is so uh, from a mathematics standpoint i would classify this type of problem as a motion problem all right now i'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem and i didn't want to say that this was an algebra word problem because that would scare people off but the main thing here that you need to know is that you need you need to understand the relationship between speed distance and time and there is a formula that you must know that uh, establishes that relationship between speed, uh, distance, and time. And if you don't know that, well, then you're not gonna be able to solve this problem, but this is not that difficult. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so here we have our problem. Now, when you're dealing with any math word problem, always use the rule of three, and that is read the problem at least three times before you do anything, okay? It's just a good habit to get into. What happens is if you read the uh, problem once, you're like, okay, I understand, and you get excited and you start doing stuff, nine times out of 10, uh, you're gonna take the wrong strategy or two, you're not gonna fully understand the problem or uh, the question and you'll make mistakes. So you gotta be patient, really understand what's going on. So read the problem more than a few times. And here we're looking for the speed of this car, okay? And it's going 150 miles. Uh, and it's trying to cover this 150 miles in one hour and 20 minutes. So we're looking for the miles per hour. Now, the best thing you can do when you're faced with a math word problem is to model the problem. Try to visualize the problem. And in this case, I think it's pretty easy to visualize because we can just kind of come up with a lovely sketch of a vehicle. And this is my uh, sketch here. And so here we have this car, okay? We're trying to determine how fast in miles per hour does this car have to go to cover 150 miles in this time, one hour and 20 minutes. Now, the thing here that you need to understand is that we're looking for speed, okay? Now, the, uh, you know, if I asked you how fast this car is going, you would say, well, the speed of the vehicle is 60 miles per hour, okay? But I'm gonna give you another word that you need to understand. This is a very, very important word in math and in science, and that is rate, okay? So I could ask you, 
what is the rate of this vehicle? So rate is the same thing effectively as speed, and it's the same thing as velocity as well. So if I said, what's the velocity of this? Uh, well, there's some technical differences, uh, you know, we're talking about, for those of you that might understand like vectors and whatnot, but just more or less, and when you hear these words, speed, you can think of rate or velocity, okay, how fast uh, something's going. But I want you to be familiar with uh, this word rate, and I'm gonna explain uh, you know, this in a little bit more in detail. Okay, so the rate of this vehicle is the same as, this, uh, as the speed of this vehicle, and this is important because we need to establish a um, uh, this relationship between rate, okay, which of course would be speed, uh, time, and distance because that's what uh, is going on these are the variables that are in our problem right now of course we're looking for miles per hour uh, which is the speed or the rate of the vehicle but we have time and we have distance so how do these three concepts or these things uh three things relate well let me go to show you that right now so this is a formula that you want to uh, kind of commit to your long-term memory uh, rate times time is equal to distance. Rate times time is equal to distance. And rate, again, you would think of this as, they say, uh, speed, right? Okay, so speed times time is equal to distance, but there is a few things we need to pay attention here. Uh, so the first thing is rate. Now, in this particular problem, we're talking about the speed of the vehicle, or the rate of the vehicle in miles per hour, miles per hour. So I'm going to spend just a quick second explaining this. So I said uh, rate, right? What is a rate in mathematics? A, uh, a rate is effectively a fraction, okay? Now, it's a fraction where you're comparing two different units of measure. So let's say a car is going 60 miles per hour. This little P right there is like a fraction bar. I can really write this this way, 60 miles, okay, per one hour. Okay, now we don't write it this way, 60 miles per one hour, but that's what this means, 60 miles per hour. Uh, per hour. Now, uh, if a car is going 60 miles per one hour, okay, or 60 miles per hour, it would be going 120 miles uh, per two hours, right? So uh, this would be like how we would measure the speed or the rate of a vehicle. Now, uh, to be clear, I did say that a rate is a fraction, but in mathematics, it's a fraction where you're comparing uh, two units of measure that are completely different. So here I'm comparing distance with time, okay? So another thing would be, let's say I have some sort of pump and it pumps 30 gallons per minute, okay? Let's say I'm kind of pumping my pool out here, want to get the water out. So 30 gallons per minute would be what? 30 gallons, okay, per one minute. I'm comparing gallons and time. So anytime you're comparing two concepts completely different uh, as uh, with a fraction you are dealing with a rate now this is not to be confused with something called a ratio and when you study rates and ratios you also study proportions so this is a big topic and if uh, you want to know more about it uh, check out my algebra courses you can find links to those in the description below but anyways i wanted to be uh, crystal clear on what a rate is because that's very important to understand the, the solution to this problem fully, okay? I just don't wanna give you the kind of the fast version of what's going on here. I want, uh, you know, I want you to be a certified professional expert. All right, so that's uh, what a rate is, miles per hour. So if our rate is measured in miles, okay, miles per hour, well, what uh, what is our distance and what is our time? Well, our distance is miles. So here in our rate, we're comparing miles and hours. So the distance in this formula also must be uh, in miles, okay? And our time must be measured in hours. So in other words, to use this formula, rate times time is equal to distance. If my speed is measured in miles per hour, then my time has to be in hours and my distance has to be in miles. Now, if your um, time, for example, is in minutes or seconds, you have to convert it so that it's in hours. If your um, distance, for example, was in feet, you would have to convert it for miles if you um, were working with miles per hour. So the one thing that you need to understand with formulas, especially something like this, where there's units of measure involved, you have to get all the units of measure set or you will not be able to solve the answer correctly. All right, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I wouldn't interrupt this interesting prompt if it wasn't that important to me. Now, 
it's important to me because it's important to myself uh, to reach my goal, and that is to grow my kind of online classroom as big as I can. I'm really trying to help people that, uh, one, first of all, if you just like math, you're just interested in math, I mean, that's awesome. I'm happy to, uh, you know, go over, uh, you know, tons of different math problems for you. Uh, that's exciting. Okay. I love that. But I'm particularly looking for people that don't like math that are just frustrated with math. I hate math. I'm bad at math and are almost on the verge of quitting. Please do not quit. This is my biggest passion. This is a massive crisis actually. And I'll tell you right now, if you are struggling in math, I'm gonna, it's not all your fault. Okay. But I'm going to just give you a couple quick things and we're going to get back to this problem. The first thing is there are no shortcuts, okay? There are no shortcuts. So if you're not putting in 100%, well, you know, you really can't complain if you're frustrated, right? But some of you are like, well, I work hard, but I still get poor results. Well, you're, uh, you know, you're probably getting bad results because of the second reason, and that's the instruction you're getting, okay? You got to find a teacher that knows what they're doing, and I know that's kind of difficult, but uh, really try to find a teacher that teaches you in a way you like and understand, okay? And that's what I try to do. And if you can't find a teacher like that, then I'll be your teacher, okay? So whatever you do, don't quit. There is a path forward, okay? So anyways, that's my true um, you know, passion. That's why I make these videos. So if you're gonna subscribe, uh, you know, might as well hit that notification bell as well. And thanks for listening to my little commercial and back to the problem. All right, so here we go. So here we have our car, we have, um, the distance is trying to get, uh, you know, cover 150 miles per hour in one hour and 20 minutes. Boy, they're definitely going to get a speeding ticket. So let's go ahead and define uh, the variables here. So we know our um, uh, rate times time is equal to distance formula. So what is the rate? Well, this is what we're looking for, right? We, uh, this is the whole question. We don't know that. What is uh, the time? Okay, well, our time is right here, one hour and 20 minutes. And what is the distance? Uh, 150 miles. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and put this all together into our lovely formula. So rate times time is equal to distance. So um, do I have the rate? No, I'm looking for the rate. That is the entire question. Do I have the time? Well, I have time, but I need it in all hours, okay? Here I have hours and minutes. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to kind of fix this up. And of course, I have distance in miles, so that's good. So we need to figure out uh, one hour and 20 minutes is how many hours only. Okay, we can't have that minutes. So let's go ahead and work on that right now. So pretty straightforward stuff. So the time is one hour and 20 minutes. So this is an hours. That's not a problem. But what we need to do is figure out uh, how many hours uh, 20 minutes is equal to. Okay, so 20 minutes. It's how many hours? Well, it's one third of an hour. Now, some of you might just kind of say, well, I know what that is. You know, it's just one third of an hour. And uh, most of you, I think through common sense could figure that out. But let's suppose you didn't understand why that is. Well, when you're uh, trying to convert from one unit to another, and here we're trying to go from minutes to hours. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we have to get rid of this uh uh, unit of measure that we don't want and put it into another unit of measure and what we need is something called a conversion factor So here is a conversion factor. Okay, we know that one hour is the sa uh, same thing as 60 minutes Okay, one hour is the same thing as 60 minutes Now we also know that 60 minutes is the same thing as one hour So these things right here are called conversion factors. Now, which one do we use? Okay, in other words, we have to uh, take our units here, 20 minutes, and multiply it by one of these conversion factors uh, to um, convert uh, 20 minutes into hours. So which one do I use? Do I use this one or do I use this one? Okay. Well, we need to use this one where minutes is in the denominator. Okay. And this is another very important point that a lot of people don't understand because when you multiply fractions, we're going to be multiplying across here. Okay, 20 minutes is the same thing as 20 over 1. The idea is, you got to pay uh, close attention, is that we want to cross-cancel these minutes. Okay, I want to get rid of minutes, and I want to be left with hours. Okay, so if I used this one, where it's 60 minutes uh, uh, per one hour, okay, or to one hour, right up here, if I had minutes in the numerator, I would have minutes times minutes or minutes squared. Okay, over hours, that's not the unit I want. So you got to be very careful. And the only reason I'm emphasizing this is because through the decades, I've probably graded maybe 10 million 
uh, quiz is great. Well, I mean, not that much, but you get the idea. I'm just telling you uh, right now, these are very common mistakes, okay, and misunderstandings or misunderstandings. Well, yeah, this is where people really struggle, okay, in terms of converting units of measure. So pay attention to what you're doing. 20 minutes times one hour over 60, the minutes go away and we're left with hours. So 20 times one over 60, right? So we got 60 down in the denominator. So 20 over 60, we can reduce this fraction. And that, of course, that'd be one third, but one third what? One third hours. Okay, so we know that 20 minutes is one third of an hour. We already have this hour. So this is gonna be one hour, okay, plus this one third of an hour. So that'd be one and one third hours, okay? No minutes, and now we have our time all in hours. All right, so a lot of little kind of sub things going on here, right? You know, talking about um, what a rate is and how to convert units of measure. These are all the little small details that get students in trouble where they can't figure a problem out. But uh, no worries, because I can see you right now. You're like, I get it, Mr. YouTube Madman. Hurry up and finish this problem, because I want to go off and do something else. All right, let's go ahead and finish this thing up, because we are finally there. All right, so we're looking for the rate. Uh, and of course, that is the speed of miles per hour. Now we have our time in all hours, okay? And our distance is in miles, so our rate, okay, will be in miles per hour, okay? So we're all set up. So let's go ahead and apply some basic algebra to solve this um, uh, equation. So rate times time is equal to distance. Time is again going to be one and one third hours. I'll just drop the units of measure for now. And distance is 150 miles. So we're going to be solving for R. All right. So here, this is a mixed uh, fraction. So one and one third is the same thing as three times one, which is three plus one or four thirds R. Okay, so this is a variable. When you have a variable like x times three, we don't write it this way, we write it three times x, it's multiplication. We always put the number in front of the variable. So this is four thirds r. And to solve for r, all we have to do in this particular case is just to multiply both, uh, uh, both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay, so again, if you're like, oh boy, I don't really understand what's going on. Well, uh, you may want to check out my pre-algebra algebra course. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. I have a ton of additional videos on algebra, all that kind of stuff. By the way, some of you out there, if you're interested in rebuilding your math skills, all that stuff that you forgot, you know, or maybe you weren't, you know, or maybe never learned, uh, check out my new course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. It's a brand new course. I start off teaching you basic arithmetic, then I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry. I even teach you some basic trigonometry and probability and statistics. It's a self-paced course. You'll love it. But uh, anyways, you'll find a link to that in the description below if none of this stuff is making sense. Okay, so let's finish this up. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by this uh, reciprocal. Okay, so 3 fourths. In other words, we're going to flip this upside down. So that's going to be 3 fourths times this. 3 fourths times 4 thirds is going to be 1, right? 12 over 12 or 1R or R. But we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 fourths. And here, we're almost done. So 150 times 3 fourths is the same thing as 150 over 1 times 3 fourths. So we're going to multiply 150 times 3, that's 450, over 1 times 4, which of course is 4. 450 divided by 4 is 112.5. But 112.5 what? Well, we already determined the units of measure will be in miles per hour. So this person's going pretty fast. But uh, really, okay, for those of you that do drive the highways, you know, unfortunately, we do see people driving that fast from time to time. Now, for me, I always drive the speed limit. I'm always going to speed limit. Now, come on now. You know, I would be very untruthful if <laughs> if I said, yes, indeed, I always go 60 miles per hour. But, uh, yeah, you know, people do go pretty fast out there. you got to be very careful when you're driving, and you got to be very careful when you're doing math as well. Okay? I don't know if there's such thing as defensive mathematics, like there is like defensive driving, right? But uh, it's probably a good idea uh, to have def a defensive math attitude, okay? Which is to be, you know, a little bit paranoid about making mistakes, okay? That's a good thing, right? You should always be double checking, triple checking your work. And the only way you're gonna get better at math is by practicing. So even if you understand this problem, if you want to be able to solve problems like this more frequently, all on your own, you have to practice. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.